Welcome to episode 25 of Lionesses Daily. Carly, Jade, let's talk semi-finals. Woohoo! Right, welcome to the show. We are here in Lyon, and this is where we always said we wanted to be, isn't it? Two rights. Beautiful as well. Couldn't have wanted better weather. Although I'm glad we're in the shade. I don't think we'd have caught. No, it's and too hot. I know, I, I would <laughs> have actually right melted. Now, Thursday night was so special. Has it sunk in for you guys yet? God, I don't know. It's weird. It's like you're just in this constant bubble. Um, I think it's sunk in that we're a semi-final watching, obviously, the game last night as well. Um, and now we've got our opponents, so we know who we're playing. Um, Olympic qualification, that's pretty mm -hmm. special too. Yeah. So, um, yeah, I think it's sunk in. Um, like, see, we're in a beautiful city. And, um, yeah, let's, let's do this. And the USA, so you watched it, both of you? Yep. Did it go the way you expected it to go? I think it did. I think we always expected USA to be stronger um, over the full 90 minutes. Um, we was kind of hoping that France might have pulled one out of the bag, yeah. obviously, with it being in, um, in France here. So you always want the home, home nation to stay in as long as possible because it keeps the, the atmosphere around the, t the tournament a lot better. But USA did what they always do and come up trumps. But if we're going to win it, I mean, we need to beat the best to be the best, don't we? We've had a few players on here on this show using that quote, so I've kind of stolen it. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's true, it's true. Like, at some point, we were going to come across either France or USA, the top, both top, top teams. Um, USA being number one in the world, like, you know, you're probably going to qu come across them at some point, whether that's semi final or final. So, if we have to beat them in the, f in the semi final to get to the final. That's what we got to do. Mm -hmm. And after watching last night, do you feel more confident that we can do this? I mean, what I love about this team is that spirit and your belief. Yeah, definitely. I think um, we always knew coming into this tournament that no matter who we come up against, we have the sort of the experience now of playing the top teams. So I don't think we have no fear against any of on, anyone now. So for us, if playing the USA in the semi-final sort of here in Lyon is a bit of a dream come true. And it sort of sets us up there nicely for the final. Fingers crossed, everything yeah. goes our way. Now you guys travelled to Lyon. Here is Lucy Staniforth. Oh, we love Lucy Stan with <laughs> Vlog Squad. And she is absolute superstar. It's a bit windy. Here she is, superstar. Smile, Joe. Smile, we're going to Leon. Leon! Has Carney MBE looked at her? It's got to be Jill, though. She's got to get one now. She broke all the records. She needs an MBE. Oh. I don't think you meant to ask for them. Are you sitting with Kaz? I'm sitting nowhere near you. <laughs> look at the front seat. It's very important that you're very tall for the extra leg room. Oh, look, Pete with her little legs. Hey. Are you comfy? Now I keep banging on about it, but the atmosphere here in the stadiums, it's just been amazing, hasn't it? Yeah. It has, yeah. I think the crowds have been phenomenal um, for us. I think, you know, travelling around France helps as well, do you know what I mean? Going to different places, so different sort of um, areas of France, get to see different teams. That's always been one thing that we've always enjoyed about going to tournament football, especially when we was in Canada. We got to see so many different places of that, of that country and experience so many different sort of fans and crowds. So for us, we've been lucky. We've gone south, north, south again, and now we're in the central. Um, it'll be good and we can't probably wait, can we, to see what this stadium's going to sort of give us from an atmosphere point of view. Absolutely. And Carly, your family have been out here, your dad and brother. I mean, brilliant. What character? <laughs> We've been sitting behind them oh, in the last game. <laughs> There's enough content for you there, surely. <laughs> oh, oh, there is. <laughs> no, but what I love is even if you're not on the pitch, yeah. the way they cheer on all the other girls. I mean, it's brilliant. It shows that it's not just about you guys as individuals. It's kind of the team as a collective, isn't it? Oh, yeah. Like, I've been really lucky. Like, say, I've been in the squad for a long time. And I think that 
what happens is the tournaments go on, the families become friends as well. So what happens is you, you end up cheering for each other's families and each other's family members and therefore all the girls on the pitch because you know it's going to take a team effort. So it's almost like the families buy into kind of what we're doing here, which is really nice. And um, like I say, they just want the team to be successful as much as the girls on the pitch, the girls off the pitch, they know how important that is as well. And look, my dad and brother are absolutely loving it. I'm sure you can see, see, see lots of times that they are having a great time. But it is, the families come on this journey with us and it's so fantastic for them to be able to, to travel and watch us do our thing on, on the biggest stage in the world. Yeah, and Jade, your family have been out here as well. Uh, they almost tackled us off the motorway. So we just heard this beeping. <laughs> we were like, what is going on? And it was your family. In the trans, in the camper. Yeah, waving at <laughs> <laughs> but they've been supporting you out here as yeah, well. Yeah, they have. They were actually meant to travel home yesterday. They had, they had their ferry booked and everything, and they rang me about <laughs> half past 12, and they went, we're not going. Oh. We've rang work. We're staying. We're oh, staying. Yeah. We've just got to travel to Dortmund because my stepdad's in a band. He's in a tribute band, and he has to travel legend. to Germany. Absolute legend. Oh, so my God, that's just, so cute. Yeah, so they're now on their way to Germany to, so for he, him to sort of play gig this weekend to then get back in the car to make it to Lyon for Tuesday. Oh, that. wow, that is amazing. They've done 3,000 miles in 10 days or something like that already. Stop it. <laughs> oh my God, that is absolute commitment. I love that. that. That is so nice. Also, what's the band? The <laughs> I band, really want to know this. They're called um, the um, uh, tribute band to Simple Minds, U2 and Depeche Mode and they're called Mind, oh to, Mind to Mode. Oh my God, right. that is so cute. Hit them up. Mind <laughs> to <laughs> Mode. <laughs> <laughs> Hashtag blog. <laughs> Now this They're is your day off. Them. Them. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe we'll get them on the show. Um, this is your day off, so thank you so much for right, coming oh, done on then. the show. <laughs> yeah, see ya. Bye. But surely Lucy Bronze is going to be showing you around Leon, right? Because she lives here. Well, that's what I'm hoping. I think we've got a barber, a nail person, an eyebrow person coming in. All, yeah. Really? She's just hooked everyone up with like the, all the necessities. Oh my God, but yeah, she's. I think she's pretty much anyone that wants to do anything is just like, Lucy, where do we go for this? We've got coffee shops noted, steakhouse noted for later, sushi place. So yeah, she's, she's pretty much sorted us all. She's a pretty much a travel guide, but yeah, she's one of the best people to, to have here. Can't yeah. complain, can we? <laughs> and we spoke to Jill and Demi on the show yesterday. I don't think Jill is yet over David Beckham's visit, firstly. <laughs> that must have been amazing right it, oh, it was unbelievable well, it was Rachel Daly was at the point of food because we was all going into pre-match yeah. Rachel Daly was stood at the door where she could clearly see him walking down the corridor and she went guys everyone just brace yourself and everyone and was everyone like, what's, what's, going like what's going on what's going on like what's happening and then Ellen thought, clocked him didn't she she was like, <gasps> and I was like what is happening here oh I wish I'd been there to see those so Jill was actually happy that she got the brace because she said she would have been like oh. yeah. <laughs> oh, that's, what did you guys do yesterday though? Like, what happens a day after a game? Um, we trained, didn't we? Yeah, so it's training in the morning. Mm -hmm. If you don't, if you don't play, or you play less than um, sixty. Mm -hmm. Um, and then everyone else will stay at the hotel, get flushes, do their mobility, do the stretching, the girls that played, recovery days, yeah, and then like it's travel in the afternoon and I think we got here, what, six o'clock last night, half five, yeah, six. half five, six? So pretty much the day's done then, mm -hmm. so it's just waiting for food and then we actually all sat around the pool last night and uh, watched the game together, which was really nice, um, just had a bit of downtime, just time to relax and reflect really and then, like I say, not talk about football for a little bit yeah. and that's the most important thing is having those days to just switch off and I think that's why we've got today in the bag to just kind of go off and do your thing and um, so it's nice to have that. We've kind of got a routine now where we have a day off, we have a travel day, a day off and then two day build into a game so it kind of gives two days to sort of switch off, get put the game to bed and then sort of build into the next game. Okay well let's take a look at the team in training. <laughs> That looked so hot. Did you enjoy that session, Jade? It was roasting, <laughs> but the session was good. It was just what we needed. Um, I think for the blowout crew, it's it's tough sometimes after coming off the back of, you know, such an elation of the game before, to then sort of get your boots on and knuckle down back down to business. So, yesterday was brilliant. It was exactly what I needed, do you know what I mean? A bit of fun, a bit of football, touches back on the ball, and you can't complain about the weather, can you? Now, I have been waiting for you to come on this show because, yeah, in <laughs> da, 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 episode one, we showed this. So 
Jade, you sailed from England to mainland Europe, right? <laughs> yeah, I know, right, Carly. Was this on the day off? <laughs> Where did Jade go? You don't sail like this, though. I do Someone's overegged that a little bit, though, because when I was a kid, we used to have a yacht. And oh, someone's doing well. Yeah, well, my mum's. Okay. <laughs> I didn't have the yacht. My mum had a yacht, and we used to. Get, it used to be um, stuck in Grimsby docks. So we used to go over weekend and go and like spend the weekend on the boat. She used to be brilliant. I used to have a great great time. I used to be out in my little dinghy in the in the marina, like with a little fifty cc a little hat in that as well. Little oars on. Oh so you did have oars. I did. I didn't sail the <laughs> yacht to Europe. <laughs> <laughs> and then one weekend my mum surprised us and was like, Right, we're going, we're going we're going on a trip. I was like, Where we're we going to? I must have been Ten, I reckon. Mm. I was young. I was pretty young. I mean, Mum wouldn't let us go anywhere without our life jackets on as well. So I was like, oh, that means we've got a, we've got a whole ten days. I think we sailed for with a life jacket on. So off we popped in a, like a convoy of yachts. There was probably I don't know, 15, 20 of them that sailed, and we all sailed to Holland. Oh. So we sailed from Grimsby to Holland. Wow. Yeah. That's cool though. Yeah. yeah. Right. We have some uh, questions from fans. So from Twitter. So Lemon Lady says, how does it feel to know you're breaking records every time you guys play? Well, hi, Lemon Lady. Uh, <laughs> it's, no, it's ledge, to be fair, isn't it? Like, it's, you, you kind of, because you're just in this bubble, you, you don't really get to see a lot of what's going, mm -hmm. going on like at home. So when you see the next day, obviously, how many people are tuning in. I think the Glassdoor video was like yeah, amazing. Was amazing. Um, to see some of the pubs, local pubs, mm -hmm. and some of the clubs and pubs in London that are showing it and the atmospheres and those like you think back to last year's Men's World Cup and the, the scenes then and then you think that we're having start of a little bit of a ripple effect of something similar is, is pretty unbelievable really. Right Emma says what is the funniest thing that's happened in camp so far and bring on the semi-finals. The fun oh my god I don't know. That funniest. Hair. Jill's hair. Jill's Phil's hair. hair. Phil's hair. What? Wait, what? <laughs> That's up there with the funniest side. Right? <laughs> <laughs> Just look at it. That's it. Just look at it. Just get a good picture of like before what game was it? When you got it cut? Is it two two games ago? Two games ago. Look at it at the start of the tournament. No. To look at it now and you'll understand what we're saying. Cool. Last sixteen. Last sixteen. Last got sixteen it. it was. You got wow. it. Sure it butchered. Was. I don't know what happened to him. <laughs> don't know where he went. Brutal. Oh, so dodgy hair. I don't think you know what happened to him. <laughs> <I don't. laughs> he hasn't spoke about it, has he? No, he, he hasn't, hasn't spoke about it. Oh my god. So okay, <laughs> now throughout the tournament here on Lionesses Daily, we're giving you the chance to win amazing prizes thanks to the Lionesses Supporters Club. So next up is a chance to win Karen Bardsley's signed shirt. It's such a nice one, isn't it? Yeah, yeah it is. It's it's cute. Cute. So to enter, colour. all you've got to do is go to the link on the screen and answer a very simple question, and we will announce the winner ahead of Tuesday's semi-final. Good luck. Now we we have our FIFA Women's World Cup France 2019 official sticker collection by Panini. Ooh. 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 Would you do us the honour of signing your stickers, please? I would so love to. So they're in the mug have over you got, there. Have you got me a sticker? Created me one. Uh, you have, you have a actually sticker. Created me, have you? You've got a sticker, yeah. The stickers are in the mug <gasps> as well, oh, Jade. Yeah. Surprise. Well, you going to find yourself in the mug. We have a couple more questions whilst you do that as well. Also, yeah, it's got all 23 players in. What an exclusive this is. Right? And someone at home will win it at some point. Okay, Joe says, what present will you give Fran Kirby for her birthday today? Happy birthday, Fran. Yeah, happy, happy birthday, Fran. Fran. Um, I don't actually know. What, no, what I do don't. you get the girl that's like super Fran? Um, <laughs> a cape. Probably a cake. Oh, a cape would be an excellent show, actually. <laughs> Finish it. No, I think um, it'll just be, there'll be a surprise for her at lunch, I think. Um, Ooh. We're not privy to. Probably it's a cake. But not too good of a cake, a healthy one. She's in a world. I'm glad that we don't get the old FA birthday gifts what anymore. What do you mean? Why like, pen? Used to, used to get used a, pen, a pen and a diary. A diary. Useful, a photo, Jade. A photo frame. Yeah, especially like, when you're 15. <laughs> <laughs> this is what you need for your 16th birthday. A pen and a diary. Oh, God. Right, we've got one more question from Katie Garner, who says, who is the most inspirational player and why? In the team? Ooh, anyone. Who's been your biggest inspiration? Um, okay, I'll go while Jade's sticking a sticker in. Um, mine was uh, Rachel Brown. Uh, so I had the privilege of Brownie coming on an under-19s tournament with me when I was 16, I think, to Hungary. And she ended up being our goalkeeping coach. So obviously at the time, she was playing for England, and then I was like, oh my God, she's actually my coach. And she's such a nice girl, like, but 
I just said like everything I wanted to be from that point. I just thought like she, as a person, she set good standards. Yeah. She was such a nice person, but she was also an absolute competitor, an absolute animal on the pitch. <laughs> um, and I just thought if I could achieve anything close to how she is and what she's done, then I'd be very happy. Um, so yeah, I'm glad to call her a friend, but also that yeah, she was probably my first big female yeah. role model that I felt that I had like something to look up to and I could see and touch sort of thing and she was there and real. I love how long that is taking you, Jade. Yeah, I think that's actually really the longest it's taken anyone. Right, whilst uh, Jade does get that, back off we're giving away her shirt. So here is five things you didn't know about KB. Thank you so much for coming on the show. We'll let you go and enjoy your day off. Thank but you. before you do that, can you give the fans at home a message? Over 7 million people watched the last game. Uh, massive thank you. Um, and let's get another 7 million people watching mm. the semi-final because it's going to be a good one. Yep. Absolutely. And stay tuned in because it might be a final. <laughs> <laughs> right, and you guys can get your tickets for the semi-final. Head to thefa.com forward slash tickets and we'll see you back here at the same time tomorrow. Bye. Bye-bye now. <laughs>